We're now at the East Hills Charity Car Show in Panania. Sausage roll. So it's it's pretty much a hot dog, but it you know it tastes a little different. Now we gotta get some hot dogs. Speaking of hot dogs, they pointed out in my last video that I was not eating a sausage roll. I was eating a sausage on a roll, which is distinct from a sausage roll. Do they have it? Do they have it? The sausage roll. Can I get a sausage roll? Yeah. Uh, no, you mean you're out of sausage rolls entirely? He got the last one. A sausage roll. What is this? Mm. I have finally eaten a sausage roll! <laughs> I would like to ask the commenters to inspect and verify that this is indeed a sausage roll. <laughs> I'm Wesley and Firebird and we're at the Concorso Deleganza in, in, where is this place? We're in some bay. Today we are on our way to a Concorso de Eleganzi or something like that. Look, Just say, I can't say Italian words. Today we're going to a Concorso Eleganzi. I don't know how to speak Italian. We're going to an Italian car show. I know nothing about Italian cars other than that they are the most beautiful cars in the world. If I had to think of, wait, wait, I think I know her. Dirt Angel! How's it going, guys? Good to see ya! Good to see ya! You got room for one more? Well, sure, yeah, hold on. Okay. So, Tell we me. were all uh, just out getting gas, and basically, this truck driver with this, like, feral kid on board just completely waylaid our group. They, like, had a shotgun. It was crazy. They were, Wait. So, yeah, we were trying to get gas. Just now? Yeah. What are you doing here, <laughs> Dirt Angel? What are you doing in Sydney, Dirt? Oh, what are you doing in this timeline? <laughs> that's I'm a big question. Um, so, I can tell you guys why I'm here. I, I'm here for a movie set. That's what I do for my work. Oh, you can't tell the camera, don't tell us. I can tell uh, who's, who's you guys? Is that us or is that the, the audience at home? I can I can tell I can tell the audience at home I'm here for a movie. I will get a shredded movie. if I tell you which movie it is. Okay. Uh, so I can't be very specific. But yeah, so so I just wrapped on my film and I have a little time to explore Australia. You uh, normally live yeah, in LA? I do, yeah. I'm from Boston, normally live in Los Angeles. Okay, and you came to Australia to yeah. shoot a film <laughs> that just wrapped, is yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay, so, and you're, you're sure you can say all that? Conjecture, yeah, that's fine. The conjecture from that, what you will. <laughs> but, I was, but I was also wondering, uh, like, how you got here at all, because aren't you from another time? I, I know you from another timeline, and no one else has come over from that timeline. Left, oh. left, 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 left. Left, 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 left. Hey, oh, now no. we're driving on my side of the road. <laughs> oh no, oh no. The apocalypse hasn't happened in this time. Oh, okay, okay. That's what I'm saying. Well, like, yeah, I mean, everything seemed a little too shiny. So yeah. you got here and they gave you a secret job. Yeah, it's a secret job I'm not allowed to talk about. Okay. Lots of secrets. Yeah. So are, um, you over, or are you overwhelmed? I mean, look at this. Look at honestly, this world. yes. Uh, it, it, it has been kind of an overwhelming couple months. There's a lot of differences here between the wasteland. Like, if I, if I saw one of these things in the wasteland, I would not stop. Green, like, red, who cares, right? Just florid, What's no the difference? What. What's the difference? They're fang it, as y'all say out here. They do? Sometimes. They actually say that. I was surprised. I, I thought it was just from the movies. The, well, the other one was Seppo. Oh, yeah. I know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you want to come to an Italian car show? Uh, yeah. Let's do it. All right. Just don't raise too much hell there, okay? I, I'll, don't, I never don't, do. Don't I never steal do. anything, okay? I am the picture of good behavior all the time. No fires. Oh, don't really? Don't set anything on fire. Don't steal anything. All right, all right. Can I, maybe like one thing? Like towards the end, if it goes really well? Well, we, at the end, we can burn the whole okay. place down because oh, great. Okay, yeah, the no, video will fine. be done by then. Have you guys been to this car show before? No, I've never been to an Italian car show ever. Oh, never Italian at all. And I know nothing about Italian cars other than that, huh. that they're beautiful. Yeah. And the only two car designers I can even think of are Bertone and Pininfarina. They're both Italian car designers. But I have a feeling this car show is going to be a lot of rich people. I think that's a fair conjecture. <laughs> I mean, you don't of... find many budget like Italian cars. Exactly. Like, <laughs> Craigslist. Oh yeah. It's... Craigslist Ferrari. It's a V12. It's a V12, but only nine of the cylinders yeah, are running. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, there's a Ferrari. Yeah. 
guys have any sunscreen? Yeah, we can give you some, but uh, yeah. Is it you're barter gonna, time? You're is that need, what I'm hearing? You're gonna need to to give us something oh, in return. Oh, barter. Nothing in the wasteland is for. Oh my goodness. Here you go. I can't tell Hard. you whose they are or where I got them from, but they're legit. I think I think this is a deal. I think you've got deal. a deal. Very cool. Yeah, they put up a good fight, but you know. Not good enough. Not good enough. Ferrari 812 GTS. So I hate most new cars. But every time Ferrari comes out with pretty much any new car, I say, that's beautiful. Yeah. Gated shifter, it has these little spaces for the, the lever to fit into. Mm -hmm. And just as a kid, I just found that so compelling. And as an adult, I also find that so compelling. So these cars, and not the car in particular, but the actual guardrail that's on the front. I started to see a lot of these when I first got to Australia. We don't really have these in the US. I was kind of confused as to what they're for. They told me kangaroos, were they pulling my leg? In the United States, the big trucks, when you have a lot of money to waste on your truck and you want your truck to look really cool, you put one of these on the front of your truck. Sure. And they call them a bull bar. Yeah. And I came to Australia and I said, you know what they should call them here is rue bars. And someone said they uh, do. They actually, some people call them, them some people actually call them rue bars yeah. here. And yeah, they actually use them. It's not just yeah. a decoration to right, make your right. truck look cool. This rue bar has probably killed two or three kangaroos. Yeah. It can total your car. It can kangaroos, total goats. Kangaroo. They got goats, they got emus. Oh yeah. yeah. I hate when you totally kangaroo, you yeah, know, you it's know. just not worth it to fix it, you know, and take it to the vet. You know, it's just, it's suffering and all, but so it's like, sad. yeah, it's going to cost too much to fix. Yeah. You know, so you just, just leave it. Right or when you eat loss. it, usually. Yeah, no, I, actually, that's another thing. I thought people were lying to me or like pulling my leg as a joke, but people actually eat kangaroos yes. out here and people actually eat koalas out here. Wait, they eat koalas? They were telling me. Maybe you eat koalas. I, look how they had to bend the license plate <laughs> to get it to fit into the box. It is so funny. But here we go. <laughs> here we go. Yeah, here what we Alfa Romeo something? Check this badge out over here. Yeah, here we go. This is one thing I was saying I might be able to identify. The B is for Bertone. It's a design by Bertone. Oh, actually, yeah, there's like way more stuff. All this right, way. great. <laughs> we got here, we're like, great. This it's, but part of my videos, part of my thing is that I always look at the parking lot anyway, though. Like, yeah, I start, I start in the parking the lot place. because most people will get excited when they're in the car show itself, whereas I get excited the moment I enter the parking lot. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. You're missing a huge part of the show if you don't walk around the parking lot. Check this out. Even though I've never heard of this designer, an Italian, ca an Italian car is proud of the person who designed it. They look like, you know, little cars you'd find in a cereal box. If you go back in time, cars get smaller. And if you go anywhere else but the United States, cars get smaller. Yeah, that is true. Let's go check out the rest of the parking lot because who wants to go to a car show when we can look at a parking lot? This is not stick on chrome pieces from your local super cheap auto or auto zone. These are actual holes Part in the vehicle of the body work, that yeah. are designed to extract the heat from the motor. Are they necessary? Probably not. But are they real? Yes, they are. I mean, this is the car you drive here like a little bit hard up. And like, you know, you can find them on Craigslist for like 800 these days. Usually have a lot of, you know, just don't even do the body work. No one cares. Um, no seat belts, but you know, if you're driving in this, you don't have anything to live for anyway. The idea that like a lot of people who founded Australia were sent over as punishment for crimes. At one point, I. Some friends and I had looked up what crimes you would have needed to commit to be sent to Australia as the penalty. And like, they range in severity from like fishing in the wrong creek that you weren't registered to be in, using a bad penny, but they're all just like the dumbest things and like definitely don't make you a bad person. I hate it when you get a bad penny though. I mean, I'd be yeah, fucking it's like pissed. Using a counterfeit tuppence or something so dumb like that. But it's just funny that Australia was once a punishment. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I came here because I wanted to come here. I know, right? Same. Um, yeah, but I think it's kind of like how they say that the most fun people are going to be in hell. Oh, yeah. So it's just the best, most fun loving, Absolutely. genuine people are going to be I mean, there is going to be Hitler there too, though. It's going to be Hitler, Jimi Hendrix. I think they'll have like a separate section for him. Okay. It's like a, a special like rung a of hell. Solitary confinement, hopefully.
Get a close up of these wheels. Really small. Well, it used to be that small wheels weren't necessarily not sporty. Nowadays, in order to be sporty, the wheels have to be as big as possible with the tiniest little tires. <laughs> I think the Fiat 500 is a small car. Well, look at the old Fiat 500. There's barely room for the Scorpion on it. <laughs> he, he needs a sunroof in that car. He picked the sunroof option yeah. so his head would have enough room. <laughs> Simmons wheels. I keep seeing and hearing about Simmons yeah. wheels in Australia. <laughs> Apparently, they're a big deal. Well, he's got four of them. Well, that's a luxury right there. Alfa <laughs> Romeo. She's Romeo? Uh, yes, just say Alfa Romeo. Good, that's fine. Is, is that, that actually wrong? how you say it? Romeo. Yes, Romeo. it is. No, Alfa Romeo. Wherefore art the Alfa Romeos? It's a front engine car, isn't it? I don't even know. Yeah, it is. Front engine. Yeah, see, I'm, see, I'm really clueless. I don't even know what these things are called. That's an Alfa Romeo Montreal. Montreal, yeah, thank it you. It was named after the Montreal Motor Show where it was launched. It was a concept car. Um, yeah, beautiful and absolutely stunning thing. That's one of the best examples in Australia. It has fake vents in the rear because it is a front engine vehicle. It doesn't matter. It's gorgeous. Even when Italians make an ugly car, it's a beautiful ugly car. They can't go wrong. It's the same as American cars from the 50s. With American cars, they had a sliver of time when all of them were gorgeous. <laughs> we had our moment. We had a moment. <laughs> yeah. Remember those days. No, I don't. I know this Italian car, because we got them in the US. Alfa Romeo 4C. I started to get excited when I heard about this car. Mid-engine, lightweight, no power steering. It's a pure sports car, except only available in an automatic. No computer screen. This could have been the peak petrol right here. This could have been the last great sports car. Gary. Mm -hmm. Is that what they call the boat car one? It is, yeah. Well, I've noticed that in Sydney, there are people with little dogs, but there's actually quite a lot of people with big dogs. <laughs> I, yeah. I've noticed this so too. Yeah, I've noticed this too, okay? I think, that, I think there's something to that, where if you live in a city, it, you usually have a smaller dog because it's very practical. But there's the whole flip side to that, where if you live in a city and you can afford to own a big dog, it becomes a status symbol. Like, I have a yard, I have a big dog. <laughs> I'm wondering now, like, is the same, you know, does the same principle apply to cars? I think it does. I That's, think there's something there. What if your kids are small? What if you have bigger kids? Is that a status symbol? I think that just means you've kept them alive long enough. Well, you could like, afford to eat other things besides your kids. Although having a little car is absolutely flex as well, as we've seen today. There's some beautiful well, but, ones here. Yeah, it's, a, it's its own type of flex. <laughs> it certainly makes you look bigger when you drive a small car. I need to go find a small car. The nice thing about small cars is they make you look bigger. Do you talk about your height in Australia in terms of meters or centimeters or yeah, how, feet? How tall inches? are you, Mans Kelly? I'm about 167 centimeters tall. Um, about five I'm just like trying to imagine how many that is stacked on top. Right, and, uh, 100 and something <laughs> centimeters. That's a lot of things to imagine. Yeah. But they actually can do it because they think in terms of 30 centimeters, which is mm. almost exactly one foot. So like they have rulers, they have 30 centimeter rulers. And so if you just think of it in chunks of 30 centimeters, yeah. now you're thinking in feet. What do your school rulers say in the United States? 12, 12 inches. 12 inches. And then we have centimeters on the back. Do lines on them? Are they we, have, we have both. <laughs> we have both. We have 12 inches. We have the section that we ignore with the centimeters, and then we have the section we use, which is the inches. Yeah. Here's the snake eating yeah. a human right there. I've seen a few variations of this. 3.2 V6 GTA to me. I had to Wait, guess. that? What? Am she, I wrong? Is she just making that up or No, I mean, it looks like it to me. <laughs> I mean, based on my best car knowledge. How did you glean that? That's your, you really do know your cars. Yeah. They've clearly indicated that indeed a human is being consumed. Yeah. But look, you can see him here too. He didn't learn. Julia, GTA M. 
Look at the, how big the wheels are though, that's what I was saying. Modern sporty wheels. So cars used to have small wheels. Like here we go, old cars, small wheels. At some point in the 90s they figured out that if you can make the wheel bigger, you actually are going to get less flex because the tire won't deform as much. And so you can improve handling. The problem is people got this idea in their head, okay, bigger is better, bigger is better, and they kept making bigger and bigger and bigger wheels, and it started getting ridiculous, even in factory cars. So this is 20-inch wheels on this car might be a little bit overkill, but if you look at aftermarket wheels, the situation is even worse. This led to the donk trend in the United States, which is where the wheel became so big, even though the tire was just a tiny little bit of tread, the wheel became so big that you actually had to jack up the car to fit the wheel under it, which is obviously going to hurt performance. So we actually ran into one of these donks when we were in the United States, and the wheels were like this tall. The car was like a monster truck, except that it was a car, and the tires had been fabricated cheaply by vulcanizing bits of tires together to make a bigger tire. It's ridiculous. Wow, it was that's totally, kind of epic, actually. It was totally undrivable. Yeah, I mean. Then again, I guess yeah. you would appreciate it in the yeah. wasteland. The, yeah. the ability to take multiple tires and glue them right. together. Yeah. That could be a useful skill. So this car looks a little familiar to me because we were driving by an Italian car repair place and I saw the back of this and I said, I don't know what kind of car that is. And someone said, I think it's the Alfa Romeo GT V6. Yeah, I've noticed this car is really popular. It's like attracting a lot of attention. Well, I know, but it's, it's like, in some ways it's the most boring car here, but that ends up attracting the most attention because yeah. you see the cool cars at every car show, and it's rare that anybody has even bothered to preserve something like this, yeah. let alone bring it out to a car show. 1978. Are you reading the cars again? I've never seen one of these. I don't think I've even seen one of these on the internet. I, I don't even know what it is. Lancia Touring Super Legera. That's a bigger dog to have in a city. They've got money. They must have a really big yacht. <laughs> or a really sad dog. Uh, love your videos. Followed you all the other videos. Uh, oh. You've seen, you know I'm, who? I'm a YouTube nut. So, uh, so am I. I oh, know you are a YouTube nut. He's You're a, a certified YouTube nut. I've never been to an Italian car show. Well, Italians have a different view of the motoring world. There's passion, there's history and things. There's a couple of signs here, for instance. Um, there's Enzo Ferrari in 1920, finishing second in the Targa Florio, racing a, an Alfa Romeo. Wait, wait, why is he racing an Alfa Romeo? Because he hadn't built his first car yet. Oh, wow. So he hated this so much that he started his own car company. <laughs> now, that's Lamborghini. Lamborghini manufactured tractors. And he bought a Ferrari, and the Ferrari had a fragile clutch. So he went to buy the clutch to replace it, found it had the same part number as one of his tractor clutches, but about 50 times the price. <laughs> so he went back and had a word with Enzo, yeah, two Italian gentlemen, uh, what's the big deal? They had a few words. A few, a few words. And so... A few he, hand gestures. So Mr. Lamborghini said, you'll build a crap car, I will build a better one. And he did. He went out and made Lamborghini. Lamborghini started because of a dud clutch in a Ferrari. Maserati something supercar thing. I think this, yeah, MC20. This is their new supercar. Fiat Multipla. I know what these are because they are weird and I love weird things. It has suicide doors in the front though. I don't think that ever quite clicked in my head. It means the door opens backwards. Oh wow. It's supposed to be dangerous when you're driving because if the door were to fly open, you could fall out and it's hard to get the door shut. One, two. It's <laughs> <laughs> so messy. Mm, pizza. Mm. <laughs> pizza. That's how you heat them up in the wasteland. You yeah. Right here. There you go. Oh. You know what, at Wasteland Weekend, we when we went to Macca's, in California City, we, in the McDonald's, we'd, we'd put the burgers on the engine. Did you so really? Yeah, we did. We've talked about doing that um, tailpipe bacon. We don't want to mess up the cars, but we want to do like bacon on the lone wolf. <laughs> All you do, you just get, you burn a human and then you just eat the person. Oh, well, That's I, usually we've how done that several times. Yeah. That's the problem. It's kind of in a love-hate relationship with this thing, mostly because I burned my, I was the dumb idiot who actually put my hand 
bare hand on the exhaust of it last year. It's cool to see like the passion of the different owners and especially the ones who are into the refurbishing or customizing in, in different ways with the history. Like seeing somebody talk about something they're passionate about is kind of cool. There's something over here that I've never seen before and I love it already. I don't know what it is. Some kind of tiny little thing. Fiat Lombardi. It almost looks like an Opal GT. We've had almost no Fiats in the United States either. Never seen anything like this in person. This for me is just about the time when cars started to get interesting. 1947 Fiat Topolino. You have sheet metal, you don't have any exposed wheels sticking out. You have a roof over your head. And you have a beautiful design. Oh, and a spare tire mounted on the back. We were just at the Chrysler show and I was looking at the, the trunks that sort of had like a bulge so that it looked like there was a spare tire mounted, but there wasn't. And I was commenting on how it was sort of supposed to make the car look older, which would then make it somehow make it look more luxurious. But it was such a stretch. So this is another one of these Maseratis that I've just never seen in the US. I've never even seen in person before. I don't even know what it is. V8 Grand Sport. Again, it's an Italian car that's proud of who designed it. Overall, how are you finding this timeline? <laughs> it's it's very clean. There's a lot of water. It's very easy to stay hydrated. And uh, I will say though that um, the gas stations are a little different than I'm used to. You don't actually have to pay at first, and then they want you to pay. Well, really, so you don't actually have to pay. You, <laughs> so just, you, don't have to pay. you just fill it, it up. It depends what you... kind of engine you're packing. I will say I was disappointed by like startling lack of like Gatling guns. Oh my goodness, my bullshit detector. My bullshit detector is failing. <laughs> this is a big moment, right? Well, we finally found. Yes. In my four car shows in one day video, I had something that I thought was a sausage roll because I was told that it was a sausage roll, but it was actually sausage on a roll. Then, in the Pox Eclipse video, I ate a sausage roll, but then some of the commenters pointed out that this was actually a frozen sausage roll that had probably been in a nuclear war bomb shelter for 40 years, and it was disgusting. Like, why is that the sausage roll that you're eating? No, you should go to a bakery and get a real sausage roll. And so now, we are at a bakery that was recommended to me, and we are going to eat real sausage rolls. Oh yeah, that's a lot better, yeah. I, I can see why. Thanks to Mad Skelly for the camera work. <laughs>